to me. 923 here at Big 550 KTRS. Greg Willard is a law professor at St. Louis University. You were a uh, you were an attorney in the White House at some point? I was a white, President Ford's White House staff assistant. And you went on to become the attorney for Gerald Ford, President yes. Ford? Mm-hmm. Um, and you have uh, been a bankruptcy lawyer here in town for uh, a couple of for years? Oh, goodness, 35 years, McGraw. You might remember him from uh, being on Channel 5 quite a bit, and he is now... Uh, taking on his toughest role yet, and that is the uh, KTRS legal analyst here on the Big 550 KTRS. <laughs> Greg Willard, thank you very much for joining us. Terrific to be here. We were talking uh, the other day uh, on the phone, and you said that um, President Obama is getting ready to do something in which no one's talking about and has uh, m- uh, uh, major, major, um, major implications going forward. And I said, what is that? And you said he's about to change the way he pardons people and restructures clemency and all that type of stuff, and no one's talking about it. And then, a week later, yesterday, he announces that he, he has given clemency to 46 mm-hmm. drug offenders. 46. Right? 46. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yes. What's going on? What is he doing? Well... Take a take a step back uh, right. for a moment. Uh, in the Constitution, um, it is probably the single most un- unchecked power that a president has: right. the power to grant pardons. Um, historically, McGraw, it has been used very significantly. I give you some give you some uh, numbers. President Andrew Johnson over seven thousand pardons. Woodrow Wilson twenty four hundred. Uh, Eisenhower eleven hundred fifty seven. Wow. Then something happened. Uh, George H. W. Bush, 77. Uh, George Bush, W. Bush, 200. And President Obama, until Monday, uh, just over 100. So what uh, President Obama has announced is that he is going to take a fresh look at the way that his presidency deals with pardons and sentence commutations. And as you say, uh, earlier this week, he commuted the sentences of 46 by and large low-level drug dealers right why eisenhower so many and then so few was the backlash so great i mean people don't really talk about clemency and pardons and all that much i guess maybe the mark rick when when president clinton was sort of leaving office uh but i mean outside of that it hasn't really garnered a lot of attention no i think i think you hit it the the two most uh infamous i guess would be the mark rich pardon as as president clinton was leaving and then president ford's pardon of richard nixon right um i think um a lot of it uh quite frankly mcgraw is television um we all remember, uh, or many of us remember, the Willie Horton ad right. in the 1988 campaign. Yeah. Well, Willie Horton was uh, released by Governor Dukakis exercising his gubernatorial power in Massachusetts. And the, the backlash from that, uh, I think, certainly moved the dial right. on the 88 presidential campaign. I think the, the larger context is... And, and, you deal with it uh, regularly on this show. The criminal justice system in this country, McGraw, is broken. Right. It is broken. The pardon power of the president, the pardon power of a governor, those, in my judgment, are critically important to helping to fix the broken criminal justice system. Here's what I fear. Okay. Out of these 46... I suspect one of them will commit another crime, right. maybe a bad crime, and we will have another Willie Horton moment. And start all over and again. And start all over again. Uh, so much so that Rick Perry, the governor of Texas, who doesn't agree with President Obama on what day it is, praised him sure. for releasing these 46. Sure. And, and I think, to Governor Perry's credit, I think he recognizes, as I, I think many, if not most Americans recognize, we have a broken criminal justice system. We have people sitting in prison that you and I and our fellow taxpayers are paying billions of dollars a year to house and feed and medically care for. Mm -hmm. Really, McGraw, they probably don't belong there. There's probably a better way, particularly with with people who are suffering from chemical dependency and alcohol. Do we really need to 
lock them up and throw away the key? So you, uh, in your role as an attorney, as a professor, uh, you think this is the tip of the iceberg, but you're, you, you want to see more of this from, from presidents. And, and not just Obama, but presidents and governors in general. Sure, I, I do. And I, I, I do think it's uh, the, the tip of the iceberg. And I think the, the administration has indicated that they intend to take a fresh look at, at their approach, their process, the means of review for presidential pardons and reprieves. We're talking about both. Right. Um, and, and I would hope that governors would begin to do the same thing. Let me give you an example. Yes. We've all read about <clears throat> these situations where uh, folks are on death row for a horrible crime. Right. And the DNA shows conclus- conclusively they didn't do it. Right. McGraw why do we have to spend months and months and months in the court system talking about whether they should have a new trial? All, all the president, if it's a federal crime, or all the governor, if it's a state crime, has to do is grant a pardon. Why can't we do that? Well, I... I you are saying... You should be a talk show host, Greg Willard. <laughs> for love professor God at, forbid. At St. Louis University. God forbid. <laughs> because... It's a question the public has asked. For, we, this is what makes the law so mystifying. We don't understand it. If, if the DNA comes back and you didn't do it, or the DNA that was used to convict you turns out that it wasn't you in that DNA, exactly. why does it take three weeks for, to release you? You should be released immediately. Well, and that's, that's the, the sort of the, I refer to it sometimes as the silent third leg of the stool, being the, the pardon power. Right. Because what typically happens is you have the prosecutor and the defense attorney in the courtroom and there's motions for a new trial and we had the situation out in jefferson city and and the one in columbia the uh, the young fellow joss keezer um but the third leg is the either the president or the governor and and at least until now particularly in the last 50 years yeah that has been a very silent part and i think that needs to change particularly as we've learned uh, with with DNA and others, um, that you know what, McGraw, the system makes mistakes. How much of this conversation is being held in the highest offices in the land? I know President Obama is doing it, but I mean, when when you have Governor Perry praising President Obama over this, that's extraordinary. You well, certainly they are not exactly political bedfellows, right? But um, I I would hope that it's it's continuing. Um, but I'm concerned that it's not. Mm -hmm. For example, in Illinois, you may recall that Governor Ryan, before he went to prison, Governor Ryan commuted the death sentences of 170-something prisoners on death row over there. But that's after they were 50-50. They they executed 13, and they let go 13 or something. But but to his credit, he said the system makes mistakes, and a system that makes mistakes cannot impose a death penalty. We, we, We... We can't have a system where we kill someone and it's an oops. Mm -hmm. And to Governor Ryan's credit, he commuted those sentences to to life imprisonment. Well, then it all stopped. You don't hear that going on in other state houses in the country. I hope that it does. But uh, to President Obama's credit uh, and his Justice Department, uh, they are taking a fresh look at, at the way these are considered and the way they're processed. Greg Willard, our guest, he is the KTRS legal analyst. He's a law professor at St. Louis University. Do you want to stick around for another segment? i got more questions. Be happy to. Greg Willard, our guest, uh, President Obama pardoned 46 drug offenders. Let them out of jail, right? They're free. Yeah, he commuted their sentence, and and some of them are staggered. McGraw, they'll be released, uh, I I know, a couple in November. But uh, they will be getting out of prison. Yeah. Uh, We're going to talk more about that coming up here in just a moment. How about the weather we're having?